Hello, how are you? So today I would like to start another new painting. Again, I like to do this small little canvas. <clears throat> and for today, I choose a, a canvas, a piece of canvas. That, as you can see, is all black. Now, this was uh, given to me from one of my students, Patricia. Which has been taking my uh, Skype lesson, and uh, she just uh, gave me some of this canvas. She ordered, and she has some extra. She just gave it to the OTG studio, and I was thinking because it's black, uh, it kind of uh, suggests me somehow to paint it something completely opposite, something white. So I was thinking to paint it like uh, creating a portrait of a, of the head of a horse, white horse. So I think it will be fun to do it and I hope you will enjoy to see this uh, introduction and I will do it in this piece of canvas. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use some light colors. So with uh, just a brush, it's not a little brush. The reason is because I don't like to uh, use in small little thin brush because uh, it will give uh, a sense of uh, creating too precise too soon when nothing is there on the canvas yet. Instead if we start painting using a bigger size brush not only we can be a little bit more uh, forgiving with the lines, a little bit more simplified with the lines but at the same time it gives us the chance to push the pigment and spread really really quick on the surface to start to create an impression, a first impression. Okay, so I'm going to start by dipping the brush on linsen oil because I'm going to use a oil painting and uh, simply doing this I'm just going to start to use in a little bit of white so I can create a little contrast. But because the white will be too strong against the, the black, I like to make this white color mix a little bit with another colors. So everything will look uh, not totally bright white, but I will have a little tint of something else. Perhaps I might use a little bit uh, blue or green let me see what happens if I pick a little bit this color. So as you can see I'm mixing white with a little bit blue. Right there. So I mix it like a light blue. And with this uh, little oil, as you can see I'm not using a lot of materials. And I'm trying to make it really oily to begin with because uh, it will give the chance to stain and spread those lines really quick. Uh, also because I haven't done a preliminary drawing which typically is like try to understand in a piece of paper making a little sketch, try to understand a little bit the proportion. In this case I would like to do a more like a plain air style. So basically alla prima, in Italian we say alla prima which it means without preparatory sketch. So everything that I see, everything that I visualize in my mind or I use it from a photograph, it will be applied directly on the canvas. And then after I'm going to have this messy uh, proportion lines, which is the purpose is try to create a sense of scaffolding. So you can start to construct the proportion, the form with a much more a better and specific shape. Before I'll do that, I use a little bit of oil. So everything really soft and not thick. So pigments is not really thick, it's really, really thin. So you can kind of erase if you need to make some correction in the process of doing this beginning study of this, uh, the head, a portrait from a, of a horse. So I'm just going to start to throw some lines there. And I'm going to zoom a little bit into the canvas. As you can see, it's a black canvas. 
So that gives me the chance to see how big I want to portray this subject. So let's see, maybe I can make a little bit lighter. I'll make this a little bit lighter. Okay, like this. Like that. Almost, not too slow, it's almost a fast, quick impression. Okay, so I want to try to see if I can establish this proportion of this portrait of a horse. using simple line. Maybe I should drop this down a little bit, right there, right here. See, that's why I, I suggest to never use a small little brush, but instead a little bit bigger brush so that you can kind of flow in the canvas without feel constrained, and be, without being a little bit too much over critical of um, the image that you want to, that you desire to create. So as you can see, I'm not trying to make nothing too precise, but instead, in a simplistic way, I'm trying to visualize on the surface proportion and everything that concerns to creating this uh, portrait of a horse. without being too sophisticated with the drawing, but instead to unleash the movement of the brush. As you can see, I really, really kind of enjoy that all these lines, they flow in the surface without having the worry to be too precise, to be too judgmental. So you can see, it's a really simplified form <clears throat> that wants to occupy the whole space. So as you can see, it's really a simplification of uh, this design. Quick study. I always like to do this small little canvas and I call those like quick study. They don't require too much attention, especially in the beginning. Because in the beginning of the painting, it's all about to try to understand it slowly how the form of an image, it does have all this beauty potential to grow on the surface of the canvas and slowly becoming an interesting subject that it could find a beautiful place in uh, somebody's home. Of course, I'm enjoying so much to exploring with these brass strokes now. They're just let it flow on the canvas. It's a beautiful, beautiful way to right now exploring doing this kind of exercise. It's really beautiful because 
it gives again the chance to be with ourselves in a peaceful moment without feeling pressure of uh, the typical everyday life. Sometimes it could be a little bit overwhelmed. So as you can see, I'm kind of looking for this kind of uh, shape. And I'm using a little bit white with a little bit blue. Uh, sometimes I like to have in a blue interfere with some colors near to the spectrum. For example, see, I'm, I'm kind of having now this blue with a little bit green to stimulate my mind to start to see some color. Uh, my goal is painting a white horse, but if you observe any kind of object, subject, anything that is uh, white, that we label as white, is uh, literally not a pure white. They always pick the reflection of lights or near object reflects back to the white surface. So this white will have a different range of uh, reflection. So basically, again, I'm trying to start to establish a little bit the kind of proportion. That's the nose right here. So you can see slowly, and I try to find a little bit the form, the old genetic form of this beautiful, beautiful animal. you can see it's just a really simplify when you start to investigate visually what we see through our eyes is a really complex beautiful image uh, what it makes it really thrilling really exciting for an artist for a painter and personally for me is kind of uh, start to see how I can uh, elaborate the complexity of see visually whatever is the subject that I'm interested that attracts me, and how to break it down and simplify all the different element, in this case, this proportion between the eyes, the nose, the ears, the necks, etc. So I just, uh, it's an opportunity personally for me to share and show to everyone how I sometimes, most of the time, spend my time in my studio. So I, I, pay, I spend my time in my studio not only teaching classes, but simply using Skype and Zoom. So it's been really an interesting, beautiful experience for me and for my students. And uh, in the same times, this live streaming is giving me the chance to uh, share how I spend sometimes late afternoon after I finish working during the day with my classes. I always like to keep fresh my mind with looking for interesting subjects, simple subjects, sometimes a little bit more complicated. The beauty of this uh, is that I'm using oil painting. And oil painting is a really beautiful, greasy and soft medium that you can spread on the surface and uh, work and mold with different layers, different impasto pigment or uh, is a beautiful media that you can blend with other colors you can experiment it with many different ways so it's a really nice way to spend uh, a few hours one hour whenever it will be to with yourself so it's a nice way relaxing way for who is uh, enjoying to do painting to be able to share it with everyone and uh, I wish you like it. I hope you're going to enjoy to see this <laughs> as much I am. <laughs> 
So I'm going to continue with few more brush strokes so I can uh, start to see a little bit better more character. For example, I really like to see this part of the air. Okay. Okay, so the, the beauty of uh, painting this horse also is uh, this, the air. I would like to make it look like they're floating on the wind. So something like that. So I kind of so wants to suggest, I would like to suggest a sense of movement. Oh, something like that. Now the beauty of this, when we start a painting like that, uh, within a few minutes, uh, is much better, my suggestion, to not take too much time to drawing really slow and to try to be too precise. But instead, uh, I think it's much better and much more fun if you use a more a free movement with your hand. Because that it will give uh, more, uh, it will imprint from the beginning uh, the core of the subject. For by the core I'm saying that the brass strokes, the movement of the brass strokes, it will be soak full of character. So that's why I do believe it's better to start with a, a bigger brush, not spending too much time with small little detail, but instead to fill the movement of the line. And to me the air of the horse is charged with character because it really gives a sense of moving and by the movement that I create with the brush strokes I want to try to uh, project of movement visually so that's why I'm uh, kind of let the brush move on the surface really freely and uh, in the same times I want to I want to have uh, a natural character that will start to be created on the canvas almost by himself. So without being too critical with the, the way the painting looks at this stage, I'm more interested to see the character of the brush strokes. smear the color, if I want to blend the colors, you give a little bit more pressure with the brush. If you want to blend the colors, you just simply uh, caress the canvas, the surface of the canvas, and then will give you a much more nicer and softer way to blend the colors that are already there. So I need a little bit more white, a little more pigment. So let me put a little bit of these colors right there. There. Okay, I hope you enjoy to see this. <laughs> Especially when you paint an object or a subject that is white, it's much more interesting to see how the white is not really a pure white. So the white it will pick all the sunlight. So I will have maybe a warm uh, tint. While the shadow part, they will have uh, something that will complement the warmth 
of the sunlight. In this case, the warm or the cold uh, it will be established by found the complement color. So if I use more a white, in the white, if I use more a warm color, so it does have uh, more yellow. The shadow area of the horse, it will have uh, violets, for example. If I have a, a, a bright white with a little bit more orange or peach colors, I can use, for example, the shadow it would be interesting to use an orange complement, so a blue tone. So it's kind of interesting to be playful uh, and experiment in mixing colors when they are complementary colors. They really have a tendency to eliminating each other. Also because we're using pigment. So pigments are this oil pigment is this nice greasy organic material that is uh, purposely created for artists so we can use different quantity or different quality from different colors and by mixing it together you want to uh, moving towards the realism look of your subject. After I establish a little bit my composition, my design, as you can see, it was done really, really fast. Uh, after you establish all the design and after you start to feel uh, kind of satisfied with the proportion, with uh, all the space and whatever it concerns the look of this first stage of the painting, uh, I start to use uh, not only one brush, but I will start to use uh, two or three brush. Because in this brush, in one brush, the one that I start with, I want to keep it kind of clean with my white. So I will use, for example, one brush to keep it clean for retouching and embellishing slowly more the light tones. And then I will use maybe another brush to working on the shadows area. Uh, and sometimes, see, I like to mix the two brushes together because again, more I get near to the likeness of the uh, character of this subject and more colors that becomes more sophisticated the way we blend and the way we mix on the canvas. Uh, in the beginning, no. That's why the, the beginning part, the, the starting part, I personally found the most fun and the most exciting because it gives me the chance again to be a little bit experimental with the colors but in the same times it gives me the chance to uh, to be more clumsy to not be too precise and too much in detail because when you start anything from a drawing or painting whatever is the subject I always suggest to never painting or drawing with too much details to begin with uh, try to make a more a blurry image, more a clumsy image. Even the movement with the pencil, with the charcoal, with the brush, it wants to be a way to be expressive. In this case, the subject himself it suggests me to look forward of this sense of movement from the air of the horse. So the, I try to imply with this free movement with unleashing the brush on the canvas, I try to feel through the movement a way to translate uh, the character. The character that is slowly it will start to be built in the surface of the canvas. So the movement of the brush is really interesting from the beginning. So from the beginning, if I feel a uh, little more relaxed and not too uh, picky to be too much in details and not about to be critical too soon. So the beauty of starting a work, at least for me, in this case it's just a little study so it's not a big painting or something that somebody commissioned for me. Uh, so it's something that I just want to do it to exercise, to practice, to training many different elements, in this case as a painter uh, the different element will be a physical element to become a little more skillful with the act, with the choosing the brush, the choice of colors, the texture, and all these interesting technical aspects, they 
belong specifically to the profession that we do. In this case, it's for me painting. Uh, and the other part is the mental process, is the state of mind, is how much I become influenced, uh, influenced by the image, by the subject that I'm observing, and how much I stimulate to represent in this image in the surface of the camera. So basically, it's really, really interesting, this mental state of mind, they create this uh, interesting, uh, intimate relationship. Uh, they start uh, first all visually, and slowly start to grow also emotionally. Uh, so there is a really, really beauty within, contained within the act of creating a drawing or a painting, which I strongly stimulate and suggest to everybody to try this kind of activity. They, perhaps we used to do it when we were in school, when we were much, much more younger. So it will, you will be surprised if you try to, to join me while I'm doing this live stream, to just take a pencil, a pen, and uh, imitating a little bit the image that I try to create in this little camp. Uh, sometimes when I get to this stage, uh, I stop right there and I always like to take a little bit, few minutes of break to look into observing, to think, to contemplating. Sometimes I take another canvas and I start continue with the same subject, maybe seeing it from a different angle. Okay. There is no rules, but in the same times there is method that I always suggest to my student. And uh, perhaps I see sometimes myself more like a person that really want to only suggest through my personal experience how to uh, using techniques and at the same time how to keep uh, stimulating the uh, the visual aspect in our mind. It could be imagination, it could be a fantasy image, it could be whatever is the subject. So uh, I always see myself in this case uh, lucky <laughs> because I do this activity since I was really, really young. In the same time, uh, it really keeps stimulating more ideas, not only pictorically, for the work that I do, but also from the everyday life. Everything I do is influenced and is in constant relationship with what I do since I was a little boy. In this case, it will be painting. So everything is really within me, the potential to express and to absorb, like a sponge. Uh, I'm using the vehicle of the eye, the visual uh, perception, which is a starting point, in this case as an artist, as a painter, but at the same time the starting point that enter through my eyes in my mind is really nurture and is really suggest many other things 360 degree the way I live my life. So I think at this moment I can uh, put a few more brush strokes. So I'm zooming in so you can see a little bit closer the simplicity of the shape. So there's nothing too sophisticated at this point, but visually uh, it starts to represent the subject that I want to paint. So you can see the eyes, the ear, the proportion of, uh, of the whole image. So I'm going to apply a few more brush strokes. Let's see. So I really like to use this little blue. Maybe I'll mix blue with a little bit red. Red that it's uh, called Alizary Crimson. So it's a really nice deep red. The one is mixed with the blue. It seems to create a beautiful violet. Okay, see, I kind of like to see, to start to apply some, some darker tone. Now they're not really dark, they're just more colorful. But at the same time, because they're a little bit colorful, and of course a little bit more darker 
than the white. Uh, create a nice uh, transition between the light and the, and the dark. See, I'm mixing, for example, this Salisbury Crimson, which is a really nice, rich, transparent, reddish color with a little bit of the white, it makes it look more like a pink and uh, so I'm just going to apply a few, few colors here and there because I like to see something more colorful even if it's this uh, uh, white horse I really like to see the colors slowly appearing and uh, enhancing more the brighter part of the ink. As you can see now, then I apply the colors, so even with the brush, I'm working a little bit slower. So it's not anymore like before moving really, really fast, but it's much more calm, a little bit more slower. Nothing is uh, uh, fast on the movement. See, now I'm using blue with a little bit green. And pretty much I'm using anything that was left over in my palette from the previous uh, live stream which I was uh, uh, sketching with oil painting um, a figure then I use it yesterday I think it was two days ago for the different live stream so instead to be critical or try to be precise and try to be more concerned of the form. I'm using small little brush strokes randomly using different colors that I already had in my palette. And that it seems to suggest a little bit automatically better interesting reflection of this horse. See now I'm trying to make this a little bit more grayish, more on the shadow area. Okay. And I don't want to lose the idea to uh, work quick with the brush. I want to work quick. I don't want to uh, stop and uh, criticize too soon how the painting looks like it. Because they will really create an impediment to keep observing the all complexity of the image. I know it's kind of a contradiction, but it's better if you want to paint in something that has the potential to be, to look really complex as a reality appears to our eyes. It's much better in the beginning to not be sophisticated with the drawing, but simply smeared some colors on the canvas really fast, because they will help to uh, creating a design that does have a much more character and that's much more charge with uh, movement and uh, energy. break from here and I will let it dry a little bit and then I will come back with a second live stream to show you how I would like to complete this quick little study of a horse a portrait of a white horse Okay, something like that. 
that. All right. So, I hope you enjoy it. <clears throat> and uh, if you like to see some other of my live stream or some of these paintings that I'm doing live stream, you can check all my links. They are in the description. Let me zoom out a little bit. Actually, let me zoom in so you can see how it looks. So to do this, as you can saw, you saw if, if you saw it from the beginning, it was about pretty much 30 minutes, 30, 40 minutes, not even. So at 30 minutes, you can kind of aim a little bit the subject. And then what I will do, I will let it dry a little bit. And then I will go back and put in a little bit more detail. So this first stage, the interesting things was to really having a, a, a free way to work with the brush, to not be too close to working with details. Instead, it's better if you just let the brush move a little bit freely on the canvas. And uh, in the way, much more better to uh, imply why you do this the way to represent it on the canvas. It will be implying more the energy, the character, in this case, of the portrait of a white horse. So I hope you enjoy it. And if you have the chance, check all my links, and I put it there in the description. And I look forward to do the part number two, which it will be to paint in a little more detail and gives more a finished look on this paint. Like I say, all this painting that I'm working on a live stream, as you can see, there is few right there that hasn't been complete. This one, this one. Soon I will be finished them. I already have few already there. You can check on my work. They're really nice, small little painting. And uh, I suggest you to look for this work. And I wish that you will eventually someday have give me the honor to own one of my work so you can say i have an original oil painting of alessandro giambra <laughs> i hope you enjoy it i hope you will have a beautiful evening here in wilmington north carolina right now it's 7 33 it's been a beautiful spring day uh, the sun slowly is going down i can see from the, my window the sunset beautiful time I love this time of the day because it's where I typically step outside with uh, uh, espresso cafe <laughs> and I take a little break so and I hope you will enjoy your evening I hope you did enjoy to see this uh, study I call this little painting study and I look forward to see you next time so have a nice evening thank you ciao bye bye